Hi, Dr. Moira Stevenson here, founder and director of Parenting with Confidence, and I'm also a clinical psychologist working with parents, teens, children, families, and young adults. Uh, this is the third video in my series on uh, helping parents survive the COVID quarantine. And this video is talking about how to encourage cooperation with your children. So by far the question I receive most from parents is what do I do when my child just refuses to do what I ask them? They repeatedly say no, they repeatedly oppose. What can I do about it as a parent? And because it's one of the most difficult areas for parents, it's a huge, huge, huge topic. So today, really what I'm going to do is just go over the broad strokes of a couple of things that you can try or think about as a parent in those uh, tough power struggle moments. Um, but before I get into all that, I think it's important to understand the phenomenon that happens when we're asking our child to do something. So our role as parents is to guide our children and to keep them safe. And in order to do that, we often have to ask them or tell them what to do. Unfortunately, our children, like most people, don't like being told what to do. And because they don't like being told what to do, they say, no, I'm not gonna do that. And then it leads often to disputes power struggles, and sometimes meltdowns by both parties, parents and children alike. So what can you do about it as a parent? Well, the first thing to think about is we know that most people prefer to be asked to do something rather than told to do something. And we can use that to kind of encourage our children or help our children feel like they have a bit more control or agency over what we're asking of them. And that is done through offering choices. It's often recommended to only offer two choices just to keep it easier for your child. So to give you an example, I could say rather than saying to my child, I want you to eat vegetables or eat your vegetables, I could say something like, would you like peas or carrots? Both of those are vegetables, so I'm happy. And my child gets to think, oh, I'm choosing. I get a little control over what I'm going to eat in this moment. So choices can often help with getting children to be more cooperative. However, not always. Sometimes children will think of a third magical choice called neither of those. I don't want either. I don't want peas. I don't want carrots. No. What do you do then? That's a moment that we could call maybe a teachable moment where I often encourage parents to engage their child's problem solving skills. So what could that look like? It could look something like, okay, you don't want peas. You don't want carrots. I want you to eat vegetables. Is there a third thing that you could have? And look, they might still refuse and it might continue to be a difficult moment, but what you're doing there is also planting seeds for your child's future development. Because I think many parents, if not most parents, want their children to be able to solve problems in difficult situations and be able to have a conversation about something rather than a dispute. Okay, that leads me into the next thing to think about as a parent when your child is refusing to do what you ask. When we ask someone to do something, we are the ones who are motivated for that other person to do something. They might not be motivated to do that themselves. And one way we can help our children feel more motivated to do things is by encouraging their autonomy and feelings of independence and self-determination. Their sense of, I can do this, I got this. So, there's many different ways that a parent can do that. And one way that I think is very important 
is to help your child feel like that's something they, they want, to help them feel like doing something on my own feels good. And a parent can do that by recognizing and reinforcing um, when they see their child behave in that way, when they see their child do something or even half of something on their own. And the parent can easily do that by saying, I see you, I recognize you, good job. So as simple as saying, I see that you did that, that's great, nice, okay? It doesn't need to be a big, big, big affair. But the idea is that as you're kind of sprinkling that concept throughout your child's day, they start to feel rewarded by being able to do things on their own because they're getting your intention and recognition when they do so. So that's one thing. Another thing is helping your child to build those skills to be able to do something on their own. And we can call that scaffolding, like scaffolding on a building kind of allows the construction workers to work on the rest of the building and build it up. So what that looks like in real life is a parent provides the means for a child to be able to execute a task successfully. So in younger children, that might involve helping them get dressed, for example. So rather than dressing my child completely, I can hold their jacket, let's say, and say, where does your arm go? Oh, it goes there. Great. You did that part on your own. Where does the other arm go? And so I'm holding the jacket or shirt and making it feasible, feasible for my child to succeed, but they're doing the rest of the action on their own. And slowly they're building up that skill to be able to maybe do the whole thing on their own eventually. With older children, it might look something like helping them with homework. Uh, getting them started by being truly and authentically interested in helping them and trying to be interested in what they're learning. It's important for parents to try to be authentic in those moments because especially with teenagers, if you're faking it or kind of, I don't know, making it seem like you're more interested than you actually are, um, many teens are going to catch on to that, and I don't think it will be as successful an intervention to help your children. Okay, so that's scaffolding. There's another thing that parents can do. It's a tool that's used a lot um, at schools by various therapists, and it's called a visual schedule. It's a real classic tool for encouraging autonomy around routines. So oftentimes, uh, us child psychologists will get questions about bedtime routine and morning routine. And if you are interested in encouraging your child's autonomy, in doing those routines. So what I'm saying there, if you really want your child to be able to get ready in the morning on their own or get ready for bed on their own, sometimes a visual schedule can help. So I will put some links uh, in the comments. You can see some examples for yourself. The thing I want to really say in this video is there's some really important things to remember when you're using a visual schedule or a tool like that, okay? Number one, first and foremost, try to make it with your child. This goes back to that feeling of self-control, self-determination, I got this. By making it with my child, it becomes their tool, something that they're using, they're developing to help themselves and not something that I as a parent am asking them to do. Okay, so that's the first thing to keep in mind. Next, make sure the tool is accessible to your child in the house. This visual schedule is not going to work if it's way up high and my child can't access it. If I want my child to use something, i got to make it available to them. And this is true across the board. The last thing to keep in mind, whenever you're using a tool like this, you want to make sure your child's getting a dopamine kick. So dopamine is the neurotransmitter in your child's brain that's related to a feeling of reward. We want them to feel like, yes, I did it. Uh, it doesn't need to be fancy. Here I'm not talking about a prize. Just something that gives a little kick of yes. And that is as simple as moving that little card from the upper row of Velcro to the bottom row. That's enough. That gives a feeling of like, yes, I did it, I accomplished it. It's actually the same feeling we get when we have a list, here's mine for talking about visual schedules, and we can cross each thing off, 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 off our list, it feels good. So 
So you want to make sure that you have a little kick um, for your child of accomplishment, really. And you can even up that with other systems that are called token system, reward systems, where you earn a prize. So you're building up your little kicks to get a nice big kick at the end. All right. Moving on to the next aspect I want to talk about in this video, and that's what to do when your child says, you're asking me to do something that's not fair. It's not fair. Why do I have to do it and not them? Okay. This is a situation that can be very complicated because it often involves family dynamics and histories and all sorts of things going on. Um, so I'll just give a few really general things that you can try as a parent if you think that they might help at your house. So if your child is often responding that things seem unfair, let and it's around maybe chores or screen time, one thing that you can think of as the parent of trying is have everyone at the house do the same type of activity at the same time. So what I, be, I mean by that is having maybe a chore time in your week or in your day where not just your child does chores, but everybody does chores. It don't have to be all the same thing. And you can even use a chore wheel to rotate who does what that makes it even feel more fair. Um, but the idea being that everybody's doing something not so fun at the same time. Okay. Another thing to think of is if you're, fi you're finding your child responds often saying things are unfair, check your own behavior. Are you doing a lot of what you're asking your child not to do? Are you saying to put away your phone and then on your phone all day in front of your child? Just think about it. Because if you model what you want your child to be doing, you're probably going to be more successful than asking or telling them to do it. And the last thing you can do if unfairness is coming up um, often is think about your structure of the day and having things kind of always happen at the same time in the day. It kind of takes that sense of responsibility off um, the parent for asking the child and puts it more on, well, this is the time of day where we always do that. It's the time's fault, not mine. Um, you know, this can be a hit and miss strategy. If it's a miss, a lovely problem solving skill building moment. You don't like the structure? Do you have some ideas about what we can do about it? Um, and this is something that with those older kids can really be helpful of just sitting down and taking some time and actually talking to them about, for example, what do they think is responsible screen time or when do they think would be a good time to do their homework? You can stay firm as a parent in what you think is important for your child while still having an open conversation with them and showing them that we can find solutions through conversations more easily than we can through disputes. All right. Those are my really broad strokes on encouraging uh, cooperation with children. I have so, so, so much more to say on the topic, so stay tuned for other uh, parts of this kind of mini-series on encouraging cooperation. And be safe, and be well. <laughs>